Welcome back everyone, it is Crazy Welder, and today I'm talking to you about two topics that I'm pretty passionate about overall. I love motorcycling and I love virtual reality. Unfortunately for me, these are two things that rarely intersect one another, and if they do, it's usually in some kind of simulator fashion that simply most folks cannot afford. However, today I'm taking a look at a game called GP Bikes, which for all intents and purposes is arguably the best VR simulation for motorcycles that is actually something that you can buy as a mortal human being without having to spend egregious amounts of money on simulation equipment that otherwise is simply going to be completely unreachable. Now, in a later portion of the video, I'm also going to sort of give you guys a little bit of the layout of what simulation looks like for the motorcycle VR world specifically, or for just motorcycle sims in general, as this is something that's kind of an interesting topic to me, and I figure it'd be interesting to some people as well. Now, we all know that car sims are something that's gotten to the point where pretty much anybody can get themselves a seat off of Amazon, on eBay, what have you, get themselves set up with a nice set of pedal boxes, a nice shifter, a direct drive wheel, and you're pretty much on your way to becoming the next best sim racer, or at the very least getting yourself into even some local racing events given that you prove your mettle against other racers in the world. And this isn't really something that's particularly far-fetched. A number of current F1 drivers have come from this route. Now some of them have gone through karting, but not all. And in general, it is a really good practice because it gets you to feel the car, it gets you to feel the limits, and with modern simulation technology where wheels and tires, suspension is all modeled incredibly well, the simulations have gotten to the point where anything that you do in these game worlds is immediately reflected in the driving controls that you feel through various feedback sensors and motions that can give you that feeling that you really are there. And given that a rig that can actually even show you that your vehicle is spinning out, that you're going over bumps can be had for something as little as $3,500 on something like Amazon yet again, it kind of goes to show you how far this simulation community has come. But we haven't really seen this level of simulation on the motorcycle side until at least a little bit more recently. And even then, some of these rigs that actually do give you a full six degrees of motion are not necessarily something that's yet quite affordable. But later on I will show you guys that there are rigs that you can currently buy for your house that can actually even fold away. That'll get you most of the way there. But the core central piece of this of course is GP Bikes. Now GP Bikes is particularly fantastic because unlike any of the other games that I've played to this day, you know, be it Ride, be it Milestones MotoGP series, not even the TT racing game that's come out recently, have had this level of detail being paid attention to in terms of the way the driver or the rider reacts to the controls on the bike, the way that the bike behaves when it becomes unstable under hard braking, the way that your front brakes have a tendency to lock you up and then send you flying, basically high siding if you end up entering the turn too hot and not slowly letting off, the way that if you're not trail braking you're going to miss apexes, the way that a lot of the things on the bike feel in terms of stability or lack thereof when you're getting hard on the gas straight out of a corner, these are all things that I have felt in any of these other games have never been quite up to par. Now, I'm not gonna say that I'm somebody who knows what it's like to drive a motorcycle under its you know, limits. Now, to say that I have professional experience would probably also be a lie, however, I do have the next closest thing. I've been riding 1000cc leader bikes since I've been 16. Now, this may not seem like it's that much, however, at this point it has been the latter of about 15 years that I've been doing this. And so far, I would say that while, again, I'm not somebody that does tons of track days, I do know what the bike behaves like at incredible speeds. Now, this is, again, something that may not necessarily be relevant to everyone. However, I do feel like when you have experienced what the machine does, what it's going through, what your body feels like, and what you actually end up doing on the bike in terms of your positioning when you're at such speeds, taking turns, braking hard, etc., this game emulates this feeling incredibly well. Now, part of that, of course, um, potentially maybe 
kind of simulating in my head based on the countless hours of MotoGP that I've watched over the years and perhaps some of that has been sort of ingrained in my mind so I do have a bit of a bias in that regard. However, with that said, when you do pick this game up, the overall simulation feeling is unlike anything else that I've tried out there before. Now while the controls are difficult and the learning curve is really steep, and again you're probably going to want to set this up with something like a controller or at the very least an actual motorcycle sim, which again I'll show you guys the controls for that that exist out there today that you can purchase. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be showing you guys what I've done with a controller as using mouse and keyboard for this particular game usually results in you spinning out or going flying off the track and subsequently your bike, which of course is less than ideal. Now, why do I say that the feeling of the game is that much better than anything else out there in terms of the other games that I've mentioned? And the reasons for this are fairly simple. When you are on a motorcycle, one of the most important things is the gyroscopic effect, meaning that the faster you're going, the more stable the bike tends to become, and this is a feeling that translates especially well when you're leaning into a turn, as the bike, of course, due to physics, wants to keep traveling straight, but you are pushing it down into said corner, whichever direction you happen to be going. And the same thing applies to the rider. You're being pushed to the outside of the turn as you're going through it. Now, the feeling on this particular game feels exactly like how I feel in real life when I'm leaning my bike into the corner, giving it my all, and at that point also subsequently feeling like I'm getting slightly pushed out to the side. And then, of course, I'm having to lean on the inside peg as well to keep pushing the bike down, as well as balancing myself on the other side, on the other peg, kind of just letting my leg hook onto the tank. And this is the exact feeling that you get in this game when you're going around corners, not so in the MotoGP series. Granted, you know, so far I've only played up to MotoGP 2019, so I'm not sure how the handling is in the 20 and 21 versions of the game, but I am hoping to take a look at those soon just to see what the comparison is like. Now the gyroscopic effect is going to be really important because in a lot of these games it feels like it's an on-off kind of scenario, meaning that it feels like either it's on all the time and the bike behaves really strangely at low speeds, or it's just kind of off and they're doing their best with the physics engine to make it feel like these are things that's happening but then it really kind of isn't. Now it's hard to describe unless you have A played these games but also B ridden a motorcycle before at least some kind of two-wheeled vehicle in your life. Now bicycling can get you pretty close or any kind of cycling for that matter if you've gone at a reasonable speed before. However you have to understand again that unless you are somebody that's taking turns at extreme speeds or heavy lean angles. This is not going to be something that you're going to necessarily feel and potentially you're not going to feel it as much in these games. Now with that said, you know, the next game that comes relatively close to this is Track Day R, which is something that I'm also planning on covering in this um, channel at some points down the road, but it's not going to be too relevant to this video right now. The most important part is that they have nailed the feeling of being on the bike. The way that the bike itself tends to fall into corners when you're really pushing it down or when you've kind of not gained enough speed. You can also see that if you're somebody who's being a little bit too hasty on the brakes, you're going to end up doing a very serious endo, potentially just completely flying off the track. You could also see yourself performing stoppies, not unlike what you would see in MotoGP or WSBK or any level of professional racing or even some of those people that goon on the streets and basically end up almost near locking up their front wheels doing stunts. Now this of course makes it a really fun experience, however it also makes for a very rewarding experience when you drive. It doesn't feel like something where they've slapped on a steering dampener on your bike and regardless of what you do, everything's completely fine. If you end up wheeling and your front wheel comes off sideways onto the, the track, you're going to see the bike hit a speed wobble where the bars are going to start doing this. Some people also call them a tank slapper. Regardless, this is something that can happen to you in the game if you're not paying attention or not being particularly careful. And this is something that I found is just that much more in tune with what it feels like to really ride 
in real life. Now, I've only had two track days under my belt and I'm by no means a quick person. However, having said that, you can see in this game that they've really tried hard to make sure that they've absolutely nailed the feeling of taking the bike through the corner. They've nailed the feeling of your steering becoming unstable under certain extreme conditions. And at the same time, when you do get it just right, it feels like you're just sailing through as you would and everything feels absolutely perfect. Now, of course, the physics engine in this game is by no means perfection. They do have some issues with low speed controls, with the bike feeling a little bit floatier than I would personally like, and sometimes setting off can result in your bike basically spinning in one spot or spinning around in a way that a regular bike simply wouldn't behave. And, you know, this game is something that's being developed by a very small team and it's still essentially in early access, so things are going to need to get tweaked. However, having said all of this so far, I do believe that there really isn't a better current game that can nail this particular level of performance at a bike at ridiculously high speeds, or even for that matter, some low speeds taking corners nice and slow when you've slowed down just enough so that you're not sailing off into the gravel and when you're just trying to get your performance up, getting your lap times on and getting them that much higher than they were before so that you are able to get better speeds, better lap times, etc. This game absolutely makes it just mind-blowingly fun and you can keep trying over and over again until you improve your times. Something that in the MotoGP series have always felt like more of a grind and the actual handling has never felt quite just the same way and I feel more or less in the same boat with the ride series as well as basically the TT series of video games that have released a little bit more recently. Now TT2 has done a slightly better job of making you feel like the bike has you know strong gyroscopic forces, it's actually feeling like you are doing exactly you know what the bike would be doing at such speeds but again I'm not somebody that can really comment on this I've never ridden a bike at 180 miles an hour through a corner nor will I probably ever however I have driven at 140 um, granted possibly a little bit at least at least but with that said you know those speeds are something that I'm at least relatively familiar with while taking corners so I do have a general understanding of what it's like to have a bike pretty close to approaching its limits or at least the limits of the tire at the street level but now that we've kind of talked about this is there a good option in terms of actually feeling like you yourself are on that bike you know let's say that you're somebody that maybe doesn't want to go out and purchase a motorcycle to start your journey that way. Maybe you want to try something that simulates the feeling so you can get a good understanding of what it's going to be like to be on the bike without committing straight ahead to see if that's something that's going to be for you. Or perhaps you just want to better your skills without spending all the money that it would normally take to A, get your bike to the track, you know, B, the tires, which get incredibly expensive, and also C, you know, just the other consumables, such as oil, you know, your brake pads, also your brake uh, rotors, etc. All of these things you're going to go through when you're on the bike, and potentially even the fairings, the plastics, all that kind of stuff, if you end up crashing, which given that you are still a beginner, is going to be highly likely. Now, there is currently a really awesome company called Lean GP, and I'll throw a little video in here so you guys can take a look at what that setup is like. They've created a really cool system where it is basically a fold away frame of a bike that you can hop onto. They have a straight up control for the steering that mimics exactly what your bike would behave like in addition to the shifters if you option it in such a way, allowing you to get the full feeling of being on a race bike in addition to being able to lean to a fairly decent extent. Now you're not going to be reaching lean angles such as you know 43, 45 degrees like you would see in the MotoGP series. However, you will get you know pretty close in terms of emulating that feeling of lean. Now, this isn't something that's going to give you, you know, 
full multi-axis pivoting control and give you that feeling that the bike is actually truly becoming unstable. However, what it will give you is a really good approximation and it'll get you to understand body positioning a little bit better in terms of handling the bike through the corners. Now at roughly 1300 US dollars, depending on how the taxes and shipping breaks out, I feel that this is a really affordable piece of kit that you can then use with, for example, GP bikes in your VR headset or without, if you don't have one, you can just use it on a flat screen monitor as GP bikes does also support regular 2D mode if that's the way that you want to go. And this means that for a complete package, you know, at $30 for the game and roughly, you know, $1,300 to $1,400 for this kit, you've got yourself a pretty good VR simulator or at least a sim rig for playing a really great motorcycle game that in my opinion has some of the best handling around. Now, if you're somebody that does not want to go the full route of using a sim rig like this, what you can also do is you can look at a company that actually makes a steering rack for motorcycles that can mount it to your desk. They also have the ability to use shifters, which are going to be leg shifted. So you're going to have you know, your shifter on the left, which you can option to be a GP shift, where instead of going one down and then you know five up, you can go basically one up and then multiple down to start uh, doing a GP shift pattern, which again makes it just that much easier for you to get into shifting realistically. Now, of course, this does mean that you're going to see a slight, you know, kind of learning curve that otherwise may not be there if you're used to using a controller. However, what you can also see is that this allows you to get a better understanding for the bike as you are learning. And also with their direct drive setup on this steering rack, you're going to feel a lot more of the shaking in the handlebars. If you get unstable, you're going to feel a lot more of the bike pushing against you as you're leaning that thing into corners and potentially making this a much more viable experience to use on the bike itself. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this system is something that can be used with the Lean GP setup, it'd be very interesting to see if they can, because at least on the author's site, they do show this being mounted to some sort of a fall bike chassis, meaning that potentially it can be mounted to your triple clamps on the bike, allowing you to essentially get a much better experience, potentially a more full-fledged experience, again, without having to spend in the tens or potentially even hundreds of thousands of dollars for a full motion sim rig um, that otherwise is typically used only by engineering firms and bigger you know motorcycle firms such as bmw kawasaki yamaha you name it to do their testing in a lab before they take things out onto the street or onto the testing truck to get their results in so now that i've kind of explained all of this you know why is this actually so important and this is because there aren't really too many other simulators out there that are at least in the relatively affordable range or well known that you know I currently know of at least that do this good of a job at getting you the experience of being on two wheels and actually doing it in a way that makes you work for it for one and two it's an experience that can be had in your VR headset so if you already do own a VR headset this is something that's going to be an absolute boom. It makes it so that you're able to race the bike in first person mode if you so wish, have it be in entirely 3D, and then you're able to get much closer to the experience that you would actually be on a bike. Now, of course, all that this means is that for somebody that might be getting into the scene, they may not have to spend the ridiculous amount of money that it would for you know starting out on their motorcycle because when you think about it even at a relatively cheap price of some motorcycles out there which can be had for you know let's say twelve hundred dollars for something a little bit reasonable you do have to factor in the fact that you're going to have to buy a helmet another let's say three hundred to six hundred dollars depending on how safe you want to be you're going to have to get a jacket you know again anywhere from a hundred bucks to you know, let's say north of a thousand if you're getting yourself a full spec suit. 
And then you're looking at boots, you're looking at gloves, you're looking at getting insurance. All this stuff quickly adds up and you end up sailing well north of $2,000 just for the startup costs of getting a motorcycle, at least in the United States in California. These are things that are going to be quite pricey. And again, if that's something that's not for you, if you already have a computer and you have $30 to spend and a controller, you can try this out for yourself and get a pretty good feel for how this is going to perform. And even if you have a, let's say, VR headset, or you didn't have one before, well, things like the Oculus Quest, the original Vive, and even something like the PlayStation VR headsets are relatively affordable now and you can still get the Windows Mixed Reality headsets for a relatively cheap price. I've seen them go as low as $60 on eBay, and this is very well affordable. And then if you already have a PC that's got a relatively reasonable graphics card in there, you can run this game just fine and have a pretty awesome experience overall. And so with this being said, this is a title that I think everybody should take a look at, but specifically if you're a VR enthusiast and you also like riding bikes. I can 100% recommend this, and I think the developer could definitely use some support in making upgrades to the game, especially in terms of its physics and graphical systems, as they are starting to become a little bit behind the times, especially given the evolution of games that we've seen uh, from engines being used in, let's say, the MotoGP series, with them jumping onto Unreal Engine and having some really stunning graphics, and with games like TT Racing where you're able to actually see some pretty incredible graphics on that side as well, and some pretty incredible physics simulations coming in from these developers, which of course will only improve over time. But I think at this point in time, it is a great, great segue into talking about why I think that this ultimately deserves a huge spotlight within the VR community as well, because we don't really get that many simulations in VR for the two-wheeled specimens that are out there on the road today. Quite simply, there's either not enough interest or there's not enough people that are buying these to really make it worthwhile for folks to jump on board and start developing more titles like this. It has been incredibly difficult to find GP bikes for one, and even though I bought it many years ago and have been putting off this video for quite some time, even in that span, I have not seen too many titles that officially support VR for this kind of racing, which is really unfortunate because I feel like it can bring a lot more folks into the fold, it can introduce a lot more people to the world of motorcycling, and it's a world that I think that involves a lot of camaraderie, it's very freeing, it's just an amazing experience overall. And especially nowadays if you're somebody that may not want to you know, get hurt on a bike and go to the hospital or what have you, this is something that's going to be a great experience which is going to be a fantastic alternative to being on two wheels in real life. Or it can be a great companion as a training aid to get yourself to a skill level that perhaps you might not have undertaken otherwise in real life, again due to the risks involved, or quite simply because you just didn't have the time to put on all the gear get your bike out of the garage and go out and ride because as we all know things are still pretty hectic and of course you know some of us are working late hours just because again the concept of time has largely drifted away from our corporate overlords now in the time of this pandemic but with that said again guys check out the game i'm gonna throw the link in the description below i'm also gonna throw the links to both lean gp and the h3o uh, racing basically rig that allows you to mount a motorcycle steering setup to your desk. Check those out, hit the like on the video if you like this content, and hopefully I'll be bringing more motorcycle related content to this channel as well as I start ramping up more and more videos. So until then,